is debuting at the 2021 Tribeca Film Festival. And to celebrate this movie, I was lucky enough to chat with the director, Mickey Reese, as well as the producer, actress, Molly C. Quinn. And we had so much fun talking about this movie. I can't wait for you guys to see it, see the movie and the interview. But before we dive into, into this interview, I'd love it if you take one second and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. And if you enjoy the content, go ahead and hit that notification bell. Hey, Tessa from Mama's Geeky here. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Guys, thank you guys for taking the time today. Really enjoyed the movie. It's definitely something that's like right up my alley. And uh, Mickey, I want to ask you about like your inspiration behind it. Oh, man. Did you ever see a movie called The Crying Game? No. Oh, well, this is just a remake of that one. Oh, well, no, there you go. Uh, not <laughs> at all. Not at all. But, uh, you know, it's uh, what about Dead Presidents? You ever saw that one? No. All right. Well, these two movies. Apparently, I've got a list of movies I need to watch now. These are the only <laughs> movies I know of that uh, <laughs> that do this, where uh, essentially they're 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 basically two movies in one uh, kind of deal, where but you're you know you're just following a central character throughout this this whole other story that forms you know out, outside of the uh, story that you think it's going to be, and uh, yeah, I think uh, you know wanting to play with that and uh, wanting to play with nuns, I think uh, the the two of those together just combined, uh, you know, created Agnes. Well, I really enjoyed it. And Molly, without giving like spoilers, there's kind of two sides sort of to your character, I guess, yeah. uh, <laughs> so to speak. So can you tell me about getting into the mindset of her? Yes. Uh, and, and I think, you know, two sides is almost limited, you know, That's she's, true. Uh, she goes through a lot, uh, little Mary. Uh, when I was, uh, prepping for the role, something I do when I'm making characters is I start journals for them. Uh, and it's based off the script, but it's also based off what came before the script. Uh, and I just, I write and I write and I write until I hit on the moment in life that gave them their momentum. The thing that they either means the most to them or what they're running from, what they haven't dealt with. Uh, and in this, it was really um, the love that Mary had for her son and then the grief and anger she experiences when her son dies uh, so unexpectedly. Uh, and to me, that's, that's her moment. That's the thing that basically, like, I don't think she went to the convent to worship God. I think she basically went to the convent to escape her life, be left alone and worship her son. Uh, to be in complete contemplation, to kind of make a memory cocoon around herself, uh, which is why I think Mother Superior hates her because she can't throw her out, but she knows that she's not there for the right reasons. Uh, and obviously the friendship that exists between uh, Sister Agnes and Sister Mary uh, is such an important one. And I, I believe it came about because they were novitiates together at the same time. So they both knew that they weren't there for the right reasons, you know, and, and there's something really sweet and beautiful about just wanting a place to escape to, you know, like wanting to believe that if you pray hard enough or you wish it, that you can bring what you love most back to life. Um, but in doing that, you may be praying to something darker, you know, like that's where, you know, it's like the, the degen or the devil, right? It's like, you can get your wish, but it's not going to be the way you think it is. Uh, yeah, that's, and that, that's where I'll leave that. <laughs> is that kind of what drew you to the role of her? Just how complex she was? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and really just the, her capacity to love and then her righteous anger afterwards. Like for me, those are such, um, you know, flip sides of each other. Um, and kind of, you know, in a way, like a, like a wounded animal, like just thrashing around in the woods and, and unable to heal yourself because, because you don't know how and no one's helping you. Um, and I experienced a lot of that feeling of helplessness when I was younger. Um, and so I kind of got to work out some of my own demons while creating Mary. Well, wow, fantastic job. You're so good in this. Uh, but you. can you guys both talk about working with Sean Gunn? Because I just, it feels weird seeing him in this role. I just, I always picture him as Rocket Raccoon. So uh, <laughs> do, do you want to go first, Mickey, and then I'll, I'll follow? 
uh sean gunn was a goddamn pleasure man he was he was he was fantastic uh um he you know just working with uh a, uh an actor as a, as accomplished as sean gunn you know you would think you, you, there's no there's he 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 worked like any other actor, you know what I mean? Just like uh, he was he was sending me uh, like uh, little recordings of himself doing the stand up bit, um, and you know in 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 constant communication and uh, just the chillest dude ever. And then on set, same thing, man, just like super chill. Um, he actually uh, saw the movie and and uh, texted me last night and said like, you know, hey, great movie, glad to be a part of it. Just like uh, just a fucking sweetheart, man. This guy. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. He was he was excellent. He was very easy to work with, and uh, you know, a, a real pleasure, a pleasure, yeah. cruise, if you will. Yeah, he's he's such a team player. Um, and Elon Gale and and myself, who's one of my partners at Quagmire, have been friends with James Gunn for like over ten years. Uh, oh, wow. He was like one of the first people I met because Nathan Fillion was in Slither. So like one of the very first people I ever met was James Gunn and his brother, Sean Gunn. Uh, and <laughs> so, so knowing him for so long, he, he feels like a, a part of my family. Uh, so when Agnes came around, Alan and I, we both, like when we read the Paul Satchmo role, we were like, oh my God, I wonder, like, could we get Sean? Like, is Sean available to come and do this with us? And we sent him the script and he was so game. And I, I think, you know, Sean is really attracted to unique characters. Uh, and so for him, I think it just really gave him something to, to bite into. <laughs> to bite into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> no you, pun on that. <laughs> you got that before I did. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, uh, did you guys have to deal with uh, the pandemic at all when you guys were filming or was this all before that? No, luckily we shot in January 2020. So it was oh, right before. Yes. Yeah, so we, we edited during the pandemic. Um, but Mickey is such a great editor that that process, even though he's in Oklahoma and we're in California, um, was pretty painless. You know, I feel like, uh, yeah, Mickey's just really a rock star at that. So that part of the process was actually really fun and distracting during the pandemic to be, you know, finalizing our, our movie. What do you guys think people should take away from this movie? Because I feel like there's some good messages in there overall. <laughs> Well, I think the uh, important thing about the movie is that uh, it that every audience member can take something different out of it. You know what I mean? Like, as, whereas you 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 go see it with a uh, with a friend, and you know you guys are going to have two different opinions on it. Usually, uh, you know, in 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 my in my experience of uh, watching it with people, that uh, everybody has kind of their own uh, their own take on it, and uh, you know, it's it's a discussion piece in that way. And uh, I, I I hope. I hope I, the, 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 the worst thing would be just someone like, eh, about it. But, uh, you know, I think, um, but I don't, I don't, I think there's too much there for, for you, you, you can, you can hate it or love it kind of deal. And I think, uh, I think there's too much there for someone to just write it off because there's, there's so much to, to discuss. There's, there's, there's so much, uh, to get out of it with, um, uh, and, and so many different things to get out of it. Yeah, I'm really excited to start hearing people's theories uh, mm -hmm. because I've only watched it with a, a couple of really close friends and just their theories uh, were fantastic to me. I, one of my really close friends afterwards, she goes, so Paul Sachimo's the devil, right? And I was like, sure, <laughs> maybe he is. Uh, so I, I really love that. I love how um, it's it's a thoughtful movie in a strange way. Like it creates conversation, mm -hmm. which is I think you know every filmmaker like that's the dream, right? Like you want to make movies that that make people talk. Uh, and then personally, I would really love for everyone to be a little uncomfortable when they're watching it. Like I would love for everyone to go, oh yeah, maybe there is that. You know, I haven't talked to my dad in three years. Like maybe there's, cause we're all running from something, right? We all have unaddressed issues. And I would like people to be made uncomfortable being reminded of that. For me, uh, like I'm always like the nun scares me, like any nun thing and then possession really 
gets me. So this, like the first half of this, especially is like, ah, and then when you get towards the end, it also creeps me out. So <laughs> I'd like to know what you guys is things that in movies that absolutely creep you out is. Oh, oh that's such a good question. Um, what creeps me out? Well, I'll tell you, I watched um, uh, Yorgos's film Dogtooth. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember the first time I watched it, I'm watching this movie that, that feels like a family drama, but there's a, a lot of wrong going on within this family, like more than your average family. They're kind of in a bubble. And I was like, man, my, my stomach hurts. Like, did I eat something bad? Did, what? Why am I? I mean, I'm nauseous. And then I was like, oh my God, it's the movie. The movie is so tense. It's literally making me sick to my stomach. And then I was like, when Alon comes home, we have to rewatch it because I want to see if he feels the <laughs> same way. So tension and, um, and lying, you know, uh, the truth being kept from someone, like someone mm-hmm. being put in a false reality, especially when the scenery of the movie is grounded um, in a relatable place. That's what really um, makes me very uncomfortable and angry and creeped out. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, I'm into that too. Like uh, super, super, uh, you know, characters are that are lying and super insecure characters yeah. like uh, William H. Macy in Fargo or like uh, uh, the Jack Lemmon character in uh, Glenn, Gar- Glenn Ross, like uh, just that desperation that you just see on the screen and you're just like, oh, Jesus Christ. Somebody, <laughs> <laughs> somebody get this guy a drink. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's 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 something, and then also uh, crazy rednecks. I don't, I don't know, like Deliverance <laughs> and uh, the Hills Have Eyes and stuff like that. Uh, that's that's that'll that'll do it for me for sure. There's yeah. a great indie called Rust Creek. I don't know if you've uh, seen it, Mickey. I think it came out in 2019. Uh, that is a really good take on um, the. Ooh, just, you know, the, the meth cooking uh, country boys uh, and a poor girl that's car breaks down. It's very good. It's very tense. Ooh. Nice. Nice. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. Not me. I will get too scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait for more people to see Agnes. It's so good. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed my interview with Mickey and Molly. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. What was your favorite part about this interview? Are you looking forward to seeing Agnes now? Trust me, you should. It's a really, really good movie. One that you definitely will want to watch more than once. I Listen, I'm into my third watching already, and I'm, I'm here for it. It's really good and there's a lot of stuff coming out the more and more I watch it. It's one of those movies so definitely be sure to check it out. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on more videos like this one. Follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Mama's Geeky over there. M-A-M-A-S-G-E-E-K-Y. Thanks guys. Thank you so much to all of my monetary supporters, my members here on YouTube, as well as my patrons. If you haven't joined yet, please consider doing so. We have some really awesome perks, including a monthly Zoom meeting where we get to talk face to face. Thank you again to everyone who supports me.